Hey everyone. So uh, what's been going on with the XY, you might be wondering. Um, well, not a hell of a lot actually. Uh, I've had a fair bit on with work, but uh, also getting things sorted out around the shed here. You know, life gets in the way, but um, also after selling the XW Fairmont, um, obviously I was without a rotisserie, so I had to think about what I was going to do there. And um, I really wanted a hoist, so that's what I did. I went with a hoist. I bought a hoist and uh, installed it here in the shed. But um, um, I would like a rotisserie, but it's kind of what what are you going to use more? And I certainly need the hoist for working on the Toyota. Like I've just done a heap of work on the Toyota underneath, and it's worked out fantastic for that. Um, one drama I did have though, and I had to cut the slab out because the slab here in the shed was only 50 mil thick, believe it or not. Um, and that seems to be a common problem for a lot of people, even when the slab's 100 mil, it's still not thick enough. So um, one tip there, if you ever do put in a car hoist, check the thickness of your concrete first um, and, and also what's required for the actual hoist you're using. Um, yeah, so that, that's sort of it with that. Now, um, I did have one sort of milestone with the XY. I'll talk about that in a minute. And um, if you're not interested in listening to me rave on for five minutes, then... Um, just uh, fast forward through and you'll see some of the work that I'm about to do and what I have gotten done on the car up to date so sort of get you up to date with um, where I'm at by the end of today sort of thing. One thing I am shocked about is as of today I'm up to 60 subscribers. It might not seem like a lot in the grand scheme of it but I wasn't really expecting to get any to be honest. I just wanted a platform to share you know, what I'm doing. So what that tells me is that there's a fair bit of interest in these forwards. Well, I love them and, and obviously you do too and so do many people. So I figured it's worthwhile to keep going and just keep sharing what I'm doing with the car. Um, and also I'll put a bit of money into the production as well. I've bought a GoPro. Um, I've yet to get some sound equipment. So I'm going to do that and, and sort of upgrade that to make it a bit better. I don't know what the sound's going to be like on this because in this case here it's sort of muffles the microphone I believe so we'll see how that turns out but I'm also recording on my phone. Now I just wanted to start by um, sharing a bit more history about the XY because I touched on it in one of the previous videos but I've got a bit more information since and I actually got on to one of the previous owners so um, but I do have the um, verification letter from Ford here so I can just read out some of the history on it. So it's a, it's a March 1971 built Falcon 500. Uh, will come with a, a 200 cubic inch six cylinder, a three speed column manual, but it's now in a uh, floor shift. So someone's changed it at uh, some stage of its life. Uh, ultra white, that's the original paint too. Two tone saddle trim, Seat belts, limited slip differential. Um, delete exterior wax, whatever, and the 14 inch rims, which is still on it. Um, and so it's a Brisbane, it's a JH23, so built in Brisbane. And um, it was the retail dealer was the head office. Metropolitan, Metropolitan Motors in Brisbane and Eagle Farm. And uh, so I've started life there now. I'm not naive. I, I do realise that dealerships do, you know, send vehicles out to other dealerships basically. So it's quite possible that it got to Mount Isa and was sold from Mount Isa, but whatever, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, um, it's, it's still a Queensland car and a good drive car too, from what I can see. Now, so the bloke I bought it off, he literally lives about seven doors down from me. I never knew he had it. I just seen it advertised one day, and when we got talking, that's when we realised that he was basically just around the corner on the same road. So that's just it's just ironic. And anyway, I ended up getting the details off of him from the bloke that he bought it from. Now I think I told you that it came from Mount Isa Wreckers. Now, um, old mate out there, when I spoke to him, he said, "Yeah, mate. Yep, I remember that car well. I bought it off of a bloke here in Mount Isa, and as far as I know." He's the original owner. He bought it from you. Um, and then he sold it to the wreckers in the late 80s. And the, the wreckers closed down in the early 90s. And he said to me, the car was parked on concrete that whole time, right up until about three years ago when um, 
Bill bought it off of him. So what I thought had been sitting for three years without starting has actually turned out to be more like 30 years. It's um, just been sitting and hasn't run. Now, uh, the records told me that it had been rebuilt, which is good to know because I didn't know whether I was supposed to put the lead additive in or not. I did. Um, but um, anyway, whatever. Um, it looks like it's been changed over to um, the valve seats or whatever they do. Um, yeah, so that was pretty cool to get talking to him to find out the history of the car. And that, that's when he told me that's the original paint. It's, it's never been in a major bingle, apart from the damage underneath, which I'll show you. It's got a little bit of, like it's been bloody rock sliding or something, but I can easily fix that. It's not too bad. It's only in a couple of pieces, like like the sill, like the, the seat braces underneath the floor, which is getting changed out. So that, that's going to be really cool to, to get that sorted out and sort out that floor. Now, um, I did get the car going, so 30 years worth of sitting, and I put a fair bit of work into it. Um, I don't have a lot of footage of that, but I'll show you what I've, what I've got and um, the end result, basically. But yes, I've got it going. Um, it sounds all right. It does need a bit of a tune. Maybe it's got a vacuum leak, but there is also... Uh, a bit of a rattle when you let the accelerator off. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I think it might be um, the timing chain might be a bit loose or something's going on there and it sort of rattles when you let the accelerator off a bit. But anyway, it doesn't matter because that engine's coming out. It is the original engine and I'll just be storing it away, keeping it you know, with the vehicle. So uh, basically uh, I'm going to put a, a V8 in it and like I was saying, I'm going to get it ready for some track duties. Nothing too serious, but I do plan on, you know, um, doing a fair bit of track days with it, drag racing. So I want to do the suspension and brakes, make sure it stops and make sure it handles, not just putting the powerhouse in the bloody thing, you know. So um, today I'm going to start doing some body work. I've got some bits and pieces here. Um, I, I thought it'd be a good idea to show you what the pieces look like because that's what I struggle when I buy this stuff online it's a struggle to know exactly what the shape is even though you know sort of where it's supposed to go sometimes you don't um, so the bit, bits I bought I'm going to show you and give you a bit of a look at what they look like so you can familiarize yourself just in case you were wondering what these pieces do look like and where they come from um, <clears throat> so I've got two rear quarters just the lower sections and I've also got those seat braces for underneath the floor I'm going to put those in today, or make a start anyway, and I'm going to show you a bit of the way that I do it anyway. Um, not saying that I overdo it, but I, I think that it's worthwhile putting in, like, uh, like putting a bit of work into the uh, protective coating. So, you know, I'm not just going to be putting paint in there, I'm going to be using, like, the chassis black as it's a bitumen product. Um, and do all that work while I've got things open, so I'll show you that. Um, but before I start doing all that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the petrol tank out. Now, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but um, it's probably not a good idea to be welding and cutting down around the rear of your car while you've got the petrol tank still in. Now, okay, it's sealed up. Mine, for example, it's got a rusted hole, just a little pinhole through the top in the wheel well. Um, just enough for when it's filled up enough, it actually floods out. So all I need is one spark in there and, and I'm, it's, uh, it's on toast. It's all over for me. So um, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that tank out before I do any of that work. It's not that hard and um, it just needs to come out. And I have to obviously replace mine, but I'd advise for anyone else to do the same. You, um, you certainly don't want to get toasted fixing your car. Now, um, I've got a personal experience. My partner lost her uncle up in Cape York because he was welding the truck and the, the tank blew up on him and he's gone and um, severely burnt one of his mates as well so that's it and you can't come back from that that's just the way it is so the best thing you do is think about that and get those tanks out first I believe so that's what I'm going to do that's first job today take the tank out then I can start um, cutting out my rusty bit and I'll show you that cheers all right so I think I've finally got it sorted now ready to kick it over the radiator, new radiator hoses, new thermostat and housing, water pump, um, battery, 
rebuilt the carby, new spark plugs, um, and the mechanical pump had shit itself. Uh, so I know that I was going to upgrade the fuel system when I put a V8 in it later on. So I thought, bugger it, I'll just put an electric pump that I had in um, with the regulator and new lines. Um, I'm still using the hard line under the body. Uh, so that's all done, wired up properly, plumbed up. New starter motor. Um, I had to wire up the solenoid for the starter motor, motor to get the um, full power through to the um, um, ignition. That's about it. So yeah, anyway, we'll give it a go. I've put fresh oil in it, changed the oil filter. Um, the oil was pretty shocking. I'll show you that. But, uh, I've already flushed that out, so I'll put some fresh oil in it. Yeah, we'll see how we go. All right.
So guys, we've had a fair bit of gear come in over recent months. I've been collecting parts. So we've got another crash pad here. Again, only a, only a cheaper one. We'll see how it fits. I've heard mixed reviews about fitting these aftermarket crash pads, but mine was toast and wasn't savable, so I'll have to replace it. And what else have we got here? So we've got a um, bucket seat mounting kit. Um, again, I just I go for a budget, um, it, but it's just steel. Uh, it's got the, uh, the bolt kit, shims and bits and pieces we need to uh, mount up the bucket seats. That come from uh, Muscle and Classic Parts in Campbellfield. Um, again, like I said, uh, I go for a budget, so um, I'm not afraid to spend money, but um, where I can save a few bob, I will. That's our card there. So they've hooked me up with the um, bucket seat mounts. Also got two replacement indicator lenses from National Mustangs. They looked after me. And I'm not sure where the crash pad come from, but it was uh, yeah, it was about uh, 600 bucks, I think. I think that was delivered as well. Um, the uh, bucket seat brace, I guess you'd call it, for the uh, floor. We'll put that in. Um, and I think that came from... I think it's... Resto Country, something like that they're called. I'll put it up when I find it. So, um, yeah, and I found their panels have been pretty good. Some of the stuff I've bought from them has actually got the rare spare sticker on it. So they, they're just on selling some of the rare spare stuff. Muscle car parts here sent me through some rubbers for the rear glass. Well, they're taking them out, it's just the rubbers. And um, they were hundred and twenty bucks. I scored a boot rubber from a local bloke here. I think he gave it to me actually. Um, and a couple of scuff pans I picked up at a swap meet. Carpets in there. That was just a cheaper carpet, so I'll be interesting to see how that fits up and whether it does fit. Now, as for the other rust repair panels I've got, um, I also bought these through, I need to get them through, the guys at uh, Muscle Car GT. So that's the, that's for the floor bracing, the seat bracing underneath the car. That's what that looks like. So you can actually take out all the old spot welds off the original one and spot weld this back into place. Nice and neat. This one is the lower quarter. So it's got some nice lines in it, nice and smooth, not too sharp. I don't know if I've actually used this same company before, I'm pretty sure I used the rare spares ones previously. And I did notice that this stuff comes from Taiwan. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not going to lie, it looks pretty good so far. Looks very similar to all the other ones I bought. It's even got the same coating on them. So, in my opinion, they're exactly the same. We'll just see how they go fitting up. But like all of them, you've got to manipulate them a little bit. So, pretty smooth panel, really. 